I'm going to touch the pad. What in the world? Fused. Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and the first video covering the actual fabrication of the steelwork for the new workshop. Now if you've not seen the previous videos of me you know revising and constant, well actually constantly revising the plan and trying to refine the design so that it's got some hope in hell's chance of actually holding the roof up um, then just to quickly fill you in we're taking out a retaining wall, which if I just do a little can with pan there, look, you see, we've got the other workshop, the other garage over there, and we've got this retaining wall that's made up of a three-foot concrete wall, which is, I'm trying to get my finger in the right place, down, down there, you can see it underneath the, there we are, look, underneath the, uh, the, the timber, and then we've got the, the timber uprights, which basically support this beam that runs, it's so, <laughs> this is so hard, that uh, runs across down the middle of the garage, you know, and holds the roofs up. Uh, and the garage, this garage over here was built many, many years ago, and this one is more of a lean-to, which was built uh, before we bought the house, but it was, uh, it was built uh, probably 20 or 30 years ago, I reckon, and the, the original garage was built back in the 1950s, believe it or not, when this house was built. So, yesterday, pan back, doo -doo 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 -doo, you can see on the workbench a couple of UB14 um, I-beams, uh, and I've welded on the steel plates onto the ends there look and there's a couple of photos of those on Instagram if you want to see the the quality of my welding which you know let me know what you think now um, the plan of attack first of all is to see uh, to, to bolt those two beams together and they're basically just a little bit longer than the complete span of the workshop which is 5.7 meters across there's gonna be four of these beams and um, you can just make out yeah there we are look there's one of the steel posts already in place. Um, they are original, they were put up for the garage, the, the lean-to, there's four of those that run down. I'm going to be mounting off those and running across the roof to the other side of the garage and there'll be some steel work comes off the concrete wall at the other side and then these four beams will go into place when they're all finished and uh, hopefully then they'll hold the roof up and I can take that retaining wall out. It may all come crashing down, who knows. Um, but the, the final design is now plan D. I'll very quickly show you what that means. Right, we have moved on since the last video. And I have conceded in viewers' pressure. <laughs> I don't even know what my original designs are. Hang on a minute, let's see what I can find. So disorganized this morning. Uh, nope. Maybe on the back of there. Nope. There we are, that's what we want. Right. Very expensive cardboard. This was the sort of the original plan. Sorry, light, you'll have to move out of the way. Where um, you can see we've got, the, this is the lean-to side of the garage. We've got this wooden uh, beam here running full length. And then I was going to put, basically mimic the apex on this side. And that was the actual plan when I even ordered the steel. However, it's not really a very good shape for a beam. So the, the original plan was to, to maintain as much head height within the workshop as possible because we've got the motorcycle hoist. I want to be able to bring cars in and be able to use the engine hoist, lift, lift engines out of the cars if need be. But ultimately, this beam has to hold the roof up and this isn't a very good engineering shape. So what's gonna have to, what's gonna happen now, if we just move on to the, the new design, you'll probably be able to transpose that across. We've got the angle of the roof on the lean-to. It's then gonna have a straight section of 350 mil in the middle. Now that actually goes directly through the, well, or replaces the timber beam that runs uh, 90 degrees to these beams. That's gonna get replaced. Um, with um, I-beam sections that will be mounted between each of these um, transverse beams, so to speak. So we've got the lean-to angle, we've got a horizontal section in the middle, and then we've got the same angle coming back down. Now, of course, originally there was the, the apex here, and it's going to affect all the lighting and stuff, and it is, 
you know where these beams run it is going to reduce the height in the uh, the right hand workshop the original workshop um, but this is a much stronger uh, configuration because if we go back to the original design where's my pen we can destroy this one now the way that this joint is here obviously the force is coming down and it's going to push down on that joint and there's going to be an awful lot of stress on those lower bolts of that joint so on the new design here as the load is pushed down that joint is actually forced together just like the old school sort of archways that you see with the with the keystone at the top and all the stones either side you know the force goes down it actually forces all those those stones together so the old one this was a big problem and it had to have a join in it because I can only transport about three meter lengths on the trailer this obviously is about 5.7 meters in full width span so there had to be a join somewhere uh, yes I could have welded it there will be a weld joint here but um, again lifting it up into place one complete large beam I just can't do it on my own it's too heavy so again it needs to be done in sections so there you go so this beam will go in first and we can support it with some timber or jack or whatever from the concrete wall get that into place bolt it all up and then we can put this second beam in place bolt it up and at the ends here we've actually I've actually made it a horizontal joint which is a bit different to what you'd normally see but I've done that deliberately so I can actually apply shims there to raise the whole beam up so that it's supporting the roof because this beam may well sag a little bit and I can compensate for the sag with these shims that's the plan right we've got some testing to do okay so that was just a very basic overview of the design and um, much of it hasn't changed if you go back to the video plan C you'll see more information about the the structure that I'm proposing to build um, so what we need to do now is we've got these two straight I-beams I need to set all that up. I've got to weld up a, a frame to hang from the beam so we can apply a load. We're going to use the crane scale. And uh, I reckon that the beams themselves will weigh about 100 kgs. Uh, and we can use the crane scale off the engine hoist to weigh the beams so we know exactly what they weigh. Um, and then we can bolt the two beams together, um, suspend them or, or mount them on two oil drums, uh, the full 5.7 meters. And then using that steel frame, we can use it again to use the crane scale, load up the frame to 250 kgs, which I believe is the weight, the estimated weight of that portion of roof. So each of these four transverse beams that we're putting up will be holding, suspending about 250 kgs. Uh, in total, I've estimated the roof to weigh about 1,000 kilograms. But don't forget the roof is still being suspended at the ends of the garage as well that, that those end supports are not coming out okay i'll give you a quick scan of the beams and the welding and then uh, i'll leave you to it for a bit I've, I've got a bit of you know welding to do and i'll come back and continue with this video here we go okay so this is just one half and this is what i did yesterday there you go look so hopefully hopefully my welding is going to be up to the job we're on maximum power on the mig and unfortunately the power supply in the workshop at the moment isn't the greatest so it's definitely a bit down on power but it's a good mig I turned everything else off while I was doing it so there you go look can we get in there oh, we can there you go so that's the other one and there's some photos of this down at uh, on the Instagram page the Andy, Andy dot mechanic on Instagram if you're keen to check that out Okay, there you go, and just for reference, so you can see that's the MIG that I have. It's a Murex, it's about 20 odd years old now. It's a trades MIG. Yeah, look what size is it? 251 amps. It's a bloody good machine, and it's done a lot of work. And of course, the old faithful power hacksaw always comes in handy. $100 off Trade Me. Actually, just before I go, I can include in this video. I went down to uh, to see Brandon at Teng Tools uh, in East Tamaki, uh, ISL Industries Limited, or oh, Industrial ISL Industrial Limited. I think it is. Uh, I should know. Sorry, Brandon. Um, and they very kindly gave me some tools that I can use for this fabrication job. 
So uh, I've not yet been in the box and had a good look. So uh, hey, you know, let's find out what we got. Right, let's see. Uh, see what Brandon sent our way. Okay, so we've got any more of these? Yep, we've got two small right angle well, 75 mil magnet holders. They're good for holding bits of steel in place and welding. Once you're welding them up, 75, uh, sorry, 45 and 90 degree angles. I used to have a set of those in England. But the ones I had were slightly larger. We're going to need, what we're using today is some pretty beefy steel, so I'm not sure if they're going to be strong enough, but we'll see. Uh, oh, some clamps. Two clamps. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Hey, look at that. That's a hell of a G clamp. Fantastic. Good job, Brandon. Right. Well, we don't need the boxes. Get rid of those. And there's another one. Okay. We don't need to open that one. It's the same by the looks of it. Oh, two more of these magnets. They're the larger ones. Excellent. So they're the 90mm magnet holders. Two of those. Perfect. Thanks, Brandon. And what else have we got? Ah, some welding clamps. And basically, mole grips that are extended jaws and for holding steel work in place. Again, for welding and drilling. And... By the looks of it, yes, there's two of those. They're the shallow jaw, perfect. And these are the wider jaw ones for getting around bigger bits of work and stuff. Great, what part number is that? That's a 275 mil, 80 millimeter capacity. Uh, stock number, God, I don't know, don't need to know that. But yes, so we'll see how we get on with those. And of course, there's two of those as well. Fantastic. Great job. Definitely be putting those to good use. So just before I start to get real grubby and, and get rigged up for this testing and get the frame welded up and things, um, people ask me, you know, how much does this kind of project cost? And initially I'd sort of budgeted a couple of grand, that's New Zealand dollars, to do this work. And you're always way out on your budget, aren't you? Uh, I know I am. Maybe I should learn how to use a calculator better. But um, I had to cut the steel order in half for financial reasons um, because the steel that I've got to do two of the spans was just shy of $2,000. Then there's all the nuts and bolts uh, which came in at, again this is for half of the job, they came in at just shy of 300 New Zealand dollars. And then, of course, you've got drill bits and other bits and pieces, and paint. You've got to paint these beams. There's no point in leaving them to rust away, because it's expensive, isn't it? You know, you want to do a good job, make it look good. So the paint is an industrial paint that will be sprayed on, uh, primer, and, of course, top coat. Uh, I won't tell you the colour. You'll find out shortly. And uh, the paint alone was 500 New Zealand dollars. That was a four litres of paint, so... The, pr the, the cost of this project very quickly spirals out of control. And some may say, hey Andy, you know, you could have just built a whole new workshop. I could, but that would involve getting planning consent and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I really can't be bothered to be honest at the moment. I just want to get this workshop up and running to how I want it. And even if I built another workshop elsewhere on the property, um, I would still, this retaining wall in the middle would still be bugging me. It's a real pain in the ass and um, I can get a lot more vehicles in the garage without it being there and for filming purposes it's going to be much much better I just can't get those wide angle shots at the moment and uh, working on a car in this garage it's just not possible not unless it's a tiny little car like the Suzuki Alto so I'll show you the bolts that I bought and then I'll get to work I think I'm finding excuses not to uh, not to do any work this morning Okay, so very quickly, because the old camera is going flat now, I've done quite a lot of filming already this morning. We've got M10s down the back, various lengths. These are the longer ones are going through the timbers, because we've got to obviously mount the timbers to the new steelwork somehow. And we've got uh, some large washers. There we go, look, bring the camera around. Look at that, tracking. Perfect. So we've got the large washers, and of course, lots and lots of M10 nylocks. And then going back over here again. We then step up a size for the main steel work, those, those joining joints on the uh, I-beams. We've got some M12s, and these are 8.8s. I was almost got attempted to go for 9.1s, but the cost was phenomenal, so had to be 8.8s. Fingers crossed there'll be enough. And then we've got, again, some other sizes. Again, all, all M12, but just different lengths. 
and of course another big bag lots and lots of washers and of course another big bag of m12 nylocks and all of that was just under 300 new zealand dollars damn Right, I really must crack on, but I just want to say a big thank you again to Brandon and the team at ISL Industrial. Uh, these additional tools that they gave me, most helpful, and they're going to really help with this, uh, this fabrication project. Uh, they've been a great um, supporter of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel for the last three years, well, three years plus actually now, and uh, long may it continue. I'm a big fan of Teng Tools. Uh, and you know, I've never had any problems with them. They've been really, really good and excellent value for money. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll see you a bit later on once I've done some more work on building this test rig. See you later. I'm back now, sorry for crouching, but I want to find out just how much each of these two um, beams weighs, uh, just for the calculations basically. So I've got the old engine hoist rigged up with the infamous crane scale and we'll see what this first beam weighs this is the smaller of the two right going up in the world okay we're uh, completely airborne at that 45 point well 45 kgs and obviously that includes the weight of the chain and of course the uh, mole grips. So about 45 kilograms. Right, time for the larger beam. So this one's about another, I don't know, 50 centimeters longer, about 500 mil. Let's see if we've got it balanced right. What are we on? There she is, 51 kilograms. Fantastic. Okay, so 45 and 51 kgs, that's 96 according to my calculations. So I guessed around about 100 kilograms all up for the beam. Now, this isn't the finalized beam, there's a bit more cutting and welding and plates to go on, so I reckon around about 100 kgs should be pretty much bang on. So now we can bolt them together, we can use the engine hoist with the crane scale to lift in the middle of the beam almost that total weight of the I-beam, which was 96 kgs, so we'll get up to like maybe 93, 94. Uh, and that will give us uh, a neutral loading on that beam. It's not supporting its own weight anymore. And we can basically take a reading from the concrete floor up to the beam. And that's sort of a neutral state, zero load. Then we can release the engine hoist, take a second measurement, and we'll know what the deflection is of this I-beam under its own weight. Then we can attach the frame with the crane scale hanging underneath the I-beam, and we can start to load that beam up and measure the deflection as we increase the load. We'll be able to produce a graph from that. It'll be really interesting to see how that beam you know, reacts to the additional loading. Obviously, if we overload it too much, it's going to get beyond its, uh, its threshold and it's going to suddenly you know, start to bend and it won't return back to its original position. Obviously, we've overloaded the beam at that point and we, I don't want to go that far because I, I need these iron beams to go in the workshop roof. Okay, so uh, let's get the crane scale set up, Lo uh, lift that beam almost its full weight, and then, uh, and then take a reading off the ground. Here we go. Okay, going up in the world, I reckon 92, 93 kg should be enough. We, we need to keep a little bit of weight on the beam to keep it in place on the drums. Okay, 40, 50. 
Okay, let's take a measurement. What have we got? 0 0.887 meters. So 887 millimeters. Perfect. Okay, so now we can re we can remove the uh, support and we'll take another reading and see how much this beam deflects down. Great stuff, okay. No support. Let's take another reading. Eight, eight, three millimeters. 88, 883 millimeters. Oh, God, it flies. Jesus Christ. Okay, so according to the calculations and the readings we've just taken there, we've got a four millimeter defle deflection, that's a four mil sag, in that beam over a 5.7 meter distance. That's what it is from one oil drum to the other. 5.7 meters, that's replicating the width of the garage. Uh, or from the mounting points at least of where this beam is going to be fixed. So four millimeters of deflection under its own weight. So what's that deflection going to be when we add an additional 250 kilograms to the center point of that beam? Jeez. Okay, I've got some welding to do now and I'll see you shortly. Well, it's been a really long day today, but we got this made. Yes, it's a new coffee table. But for now, we're going to use it to put some bricks in. And each of these bricks weighs almost bang on two kilograms. So we're going to need, well, not quite 125, because this frame already weighs 32 and a half kilograms. I weighed it on the, uh, on the engine hoist, so we can deduct that from the 250, which leaves, what, 218, 217.5, that'll do. So we've got probably just over a hundred of these bricks to put in and we should then be able to apply onto this uh, crane scale and the beam an additional 250 kilograms. Now the next problem is I can't measure the distance between the beam and the ground anymore because well we've got the coffee table in the way. So I'll rig something up above the beam so we can use that little laser um, you know, tape measure thing to uh, laser measure, that'd be the word wouldn't it? the laser measure to, to see the increase in distance from the beam to a fixed point. That'll be easy. And we'll probably do it in incre increments of maybe 20 kgs, and we'll see how that uh, deflection is going. God, can't wait for a cider. Here we go. Okay, so just so we can get a reference point again with the beam under its own weight only. Yes, there's a little chain on there, but that's not gonna make any difference. I've disconnected the coffee table and the crane scale, so it's just hanging there on its own weight. And just up here, we've now got a data. It's got a chain on there, so it's pretty, pretty stationary. It's going to be a good, a good reference point. So, what we need to know now before we start is the distance from here to here, and that's going to be the equivalent to the, to the four millimeters of sag. We know that the beam is sagging by four millimeters at the moment, so that's a good start point. So, here we go. What do we get? There you are, look. 613 millimeters. Perfect. Right, let's get the coffee table back on and make a start. Right, coffee table's on. Let's take a new reading and see if it's dropped down much. Ooh, what do we got? Ha! <laughs> Not much. 614 millimeters. So the coffee table has made the beam sag one more millimeter. Jeez, just the weight of a coffee table. That's crazy. Right, so coffee table, additional 32.5 kilograms, 614 millimeters. So now we know that that's a five millimeter deflection. Jeez, the beam will be on the ground by the time we get it loaded up, won't it? Okay, time for some bricks. 
Okay, so now the weight of the coffee table is on the crane scale. I've zero of the scale, and we're aiming for a balance of 217.5 kilograms. And we'll go up in increments of about 20, roughly. Okay, I'll put 20, uh, 20 kgs of bricks in, and we'll see where we end up. This might not end well. I've got to keep the thing balanced as well, haven't I? Easier said, oh, Mr. Snail. That's his left arm. Okay. Six bricks, 12 and a half kgs, that's about right, isn't it? And there's some wildlife in these bricks. One more brick. Okay, so just over 20 kilograms, 21 kgs. Let's see what the uh, deflection is. Six one five. Okay, so we've increased by another millimeter. They are look six one five. Jeez. Right, tell me when we get to 40, because I can't see the scale. Keep going. 40, 41. Cool. Okay, let's take a reading. Oh, try again. Oh, it hasn't moved. 615. Perfect. I like that. Okay, so we're on 41 kilograms. And it's still at 615. It's still 6 millimeters. Obviously, it has deflected a bit more. It's just less than a millimeter, less than half a mil. So we'll crack on. More bricks. Spiders, of course. Right, spin it round, do a few round there, I think. Boom! God, it's almost like I made this coffee table to measure, isn't it? KGs, right. Oh wow, still the same reading. Brilliant. Okay, so we're at 59.5. I should have done another brick, shouldn't I really? Okay, and still 615. So still six millimeters of deflection. Things are looking better. Right, let's keep going. Okay, so let's go up to 80, 80 kg now. Oh, we're grounding out on that side. That's no good, is it? Seventy-four. That's took 
Okay, so we've got 80.5 kilograms. Right. Oh, we've moved. One more millimetre, 616 millimetres. Okay, so we're on 80.5 according to the scale. And we're on 616, which takes us to 7 millimetres of deflection. God, we're not even halfway yet. Jeez. Okay, give me a shout when we get to 100. Still want my weight. <laughs> I'm just saying that we've got the weight of the. Uh, Coffee table as well, haven't we? Because we started at zero. Okay, let's stick one over there. I'm not going to get one in that corner, are we? Right, near enough. Putting a lot of faith in my welding. What are we up to? 92. Seven. One more. Hundred point five. Hundred and one. Wow. Okay, we're going in. Six one seven. Things are moving. Damn. Right, 101 kilograms, point zero, and we're at 617, which now means we're at 8 millimeters of deflection from zero load, don't forget. So when the beam isn't even holding its own weight to, what are we on total wise? Well, the beam weighs nearly 100, it was 96, wasn't it? Plus to start the coffee table weight, so 32.5 plus 96 plus 101. So that beam is currently supporting 229.5 kilograms, and it's only moved eight millimeters. Man, it's doing well. Okay, let's crack on because we've got to get oh, battery's charged up. We've got to get to 217.5. I'm gonna need some more cardboard. Damn. 120. Here we go. Put the sticks on this side now. Like. Something's going to break, isn't it? There might be a bit of beam there. seen this on the Andy Mechanic channel. Okay, 121 kilograms. Okay, here we go. Has it moved? Nope, 617. Brilliant. Okay, we're on 121.5 and we're still at 617 millimeters. It's only accurate to one millimeter is this. So, that still gives us eight millimeters of deflection. More bricks. There's some weight. Notice I'm not underneath the coffee table. Notice the coffee table is really quite close to, close to the ground for a reason. Yeah, I know these chains are at a bit of a funny angle, but I really couldn't be lifting the beam up any higher than what it is. So it is what it is. We do our best. Some bricks in there, we can. That's good. Right, what are we on? Ooh, a bit more yet. Ooh, it must be over halfway now. Okay, let's keep going. One more. Let's 
doing well to keep balance, isn't it? Right, 142 kilograms. Place your bets. <whistles> Hasn't moved. Fantastic. Actually, I'm very surprised about this. 142 kilograms. And it's still 617. Eight millimeters. Okay. More bricks. This is interesting, isn't it? Never quite know what's going to happen. Is a shackle going to break? The beam can't break. It can bend all of a sudden, but it can't break. One of my welds, welds could fail. That little shackle there is doing well. And that one up there as well. There's no idea what the rating is for those. Tell you what though. We're finding out, aren't we? Okay, we're going to stop at 160. So one more brick. Oh, bang on, look at that. Okay, here we go. Oh, it has moved. 618. Okay, so we're on a... Oh, it's actually gone up point four. Oh, piece of metal in my finger, look at that. Damn. Okay, uh, 160.5 it's gone up to. And we're on point, uh, 618 millimetres. So that gives us 9 millimetres of deflection. Jeez, 180 coming up. Woohoo! Okay, start with that again. We're not far off now because there's not many bricks left. The brick coffee table. Move. You can feel the weight now. Okay, so we're going up to 180. Starting to get into the realms of heaviness. Things could fail. 174. Last one. 180. Wow. Okay, place your bets. Ho 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 ho! 618. Okay, we're actually on 181 kgs now. And it's still at 618. Nine millimeters. Okay. I need to do a new bit of card there. So, load. Distance. What did I put on there? Distance, yep. And deflection. Okay, so the next one. We're going for the 200. Well, hey, here goes. Gonna need a cider after this. Okay, so we're going for a, a fifth of a ton, fifth of a metric ton coming up. Something's got a snap, hasn't it? I should be wearing eye protection. Uh, okay, one eight eight. Holy shit. Something's going to go pop. 195. I hope not. Because we need to get to that 220, don't we? What are we on? 201 kilograms. Okay, it really has to have moved this time, doesn't it? Ooh. Oh, it's moved quite a bit. I'm going to redo that one, see if it's the same. All right, 621 it was the reading first time. Let's try again. Shit. 
622. Let's try again. Hopefully it's not going to break. 622 it is. Damn. Okay, so the load is 201.5. And it's 622. Which gives us a deflection of 12 millimeters. Holy shit. Okay, things are moving pretty quick. I hope we're not reaching the maximum load of that beam. I can't see that we are. Jeez. All right, we need to get beyond the target of 217.5. Welding, you can do this. What are we on? 209. Oh, what if it in? It's all right. I can make this work. 217.5 bang on target holy shit okay one more brick for good measure 219.5 right 220 let's see what the deflection is okay we were 622 on the last one let's hope we're not too much further than that because otherwise that beam's starting to bend big time oh Look at that, it's still 622. Okay, we'll do one more, just to double check. 622, brilliant. I was getting worried that we might have gone beyond the elasticity of that uh, beam. Okay, so we're on 220. And it's at 622, same, 12 millimeters of deflection. Wow. So the total load on the beam, we've got 220 of bricks. So that's going to be 220 worth of bricks plus our coffee table at 32.5 plus the beam itself at 96. Ooh, we're just short. I said 350. We need one more brick. This could be the brick. Okay, well. I've got 13 more bricks left on the stack that I've brought in and I can hear you all shouting to me, Andy, put them on the coffee table, let's see what happens. Okay, well I suppose it'll give us a margin, won't it, for any additional load like tools that hang up in the ceiling or engines that I try and lift out of cars. <laughs> Jeez, this could all end in disaster. Right, brick. Number 13 going on. Holy crap. Okay, let's crack on. I'm going beyond my uh, design now. I don't know how well it's going to cope. I really don't. I have no idea. Okay. Go about another six bricks left after this. Stick a few over there. So we're approaching quarter of a ton of bricks. That is some weight, to be honest. Two hundred and forty. Holy crap! I might run out of bricks. I want to get to quarter of a ton. Oh, I need four kilograms. Two more bricks. Back in a second. <sighs> Holy crap. Things that you lot make me do, honestly. Right, there's your backlight. 246.5. Woohoo! <laughs> quarter of a metric ton hanging off that beam. 
What do you reckon the deflection is going to be now? I have no idea. Let's take a look. I hope you haven't bent the beam. Oh, 623. I reckon that's about right for the extra weight we put on. Let's just clear that and we'll do it again. 622. Best of three. 623. Okay, so it's somewhere between 622 and 623. Probably 622. 622.5 millimeters, I reckon, something like that. Okay, let's add that to our list. Okay, so we got, it's actually just over, it's 250.5, and we're going to go for 623, which gives us 30 millimeters of deflection. And that's it. I'm not doing any more. I'm going to break it. Oh, man, you can tell I've been grinding and stuff today, can't you? Look at the state of my hands. And I cut my thumb, and I set myself on fire today. The bottom of my jeans. I thought I could smell something burning. Anyway, so um, the total load hanging off that beam, well, the total load on that beam, including the beam's weight itself, is currently 379 kilograms. That's a lot of weight, and that's a lot more weight than the, that's going to be on that beam that I've anticipated, at least. So... I think it's a pretty good job there. You wait, it's going to go crashing down in a minute, isn't it, while we're doing this? Okay, so that's for a straight beam. Now, I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow to modify this beam now into the final design for this garage. As if by magic, here it is. Okay, so remember now we're going to be going with, you know, the lean-to angle, a flat bit in the middle, horizontal, sorry, technical, horizontal bit. And then the same angle again coming down on this side of the workshop. Um, so which will be actually this side here, look. Actually it's not because it's all mirrored. It's the join, the join is on this side. Anyway, far too confusing. But with that shape there, this joint now is under compression. Um, whereas on the old design, it was actually, it was actually trying to pull, it, pull the bolts apart. And that's quite dangerous in construction. So I'm very pleased that I've changed that around. Okay, well, that's what I have to do tomorrow and put the mounts on it and stuff, and then we'll test it all over again. So that's gonna be another video because I need to sign this one off now and get editing it. Well, what do you think? Do you think that new design with this sort of almost like an arch where it's, it's you know, got a slight, it's a very shallow apex though. It's only maybe five, 10 degrees, if that. I've not measured it yet. But um, is that gonna reduce the amount of deflection with that load and we'll do the same thing we'll go up to 250 kgs in the um, on the coffee table should I say and we'll see what the reading is then if it's the same well we've lost nothing if it's less then that's a bonus isn't it that means that 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 structure can carry more weight which is what we're looking for it gives us a bit more margin for error Okay, crew, well, listen, it's been a long day. I need to go and get cleaned up. I've got a whole workshop to tidy up and get all the motorcycles and stuff brought back in again. And, uh, you know, I could do a few ciders before bed. So if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. Uh, to, you know, make sure you subscribe, because there's lots of really cool videos coming out soon. And I hear the tall girls are coming back. Shh, don't tell the wife. She's outside. Okay, uh, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. And, of course, uh, drop onto the old Patreon page as well. You'll see a link on the main Andy Mechanic uh, YouTube channel, just on the banner across to the right-hand side, a little Patreon symbol. Drop onto there, and you can read all about the channel, where it came from, why it's here, where it's going, up and coming projects, and of course, there are profiles and lots and lots of photos that you can download of the various tool girls, and I'm sure you all have your own favourites. Okay, crew, well, until next time, cheers, over and out. And we get the up again. Oh.
Ha, 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 ha.